In this video I'm going to demonstrate the creation of a Revit family including parameters and family types. To begin with I'm just going to create a generic family so I will go to new then family English Imperial then I will select generic model then open. The family editor opens on the reference level and we can see the center reference planes here. Initially I'm going to start out with a 4 foot by 4 foot box. When working with a parametric family everything is driven by reference planes. I'll create reference planes and create parameters between the reference planes then I'll create the geometry and lock them to the reference planes. So therefore here on the create panel I'm going to select the reference plane tool. I'm going to choose the pick lines option and I'm going to put in a two foot offset. Then I will offset the original planes to the left and right and then up and down from the horizontal one as well. Similarly I'm going to create a reference plane for the top of the box as well. I'm going to switch to the front elevation where I already have a reference level for the bottom. Then I'm going to create a new reference plane two feet above. So using the same steps, two foot offset, pick line, then I'll create my reference plane here. Next I'm going to create the extrusion geometry. I'm going to switch back to the reference level. On the create tab I'm going to select extrusion. I am going to use my pick lines tool and the lock option. Then I will select the four outer planes. Then I will use my trim tool to trim these into a box shape. Then I will select finish. I'll switch to my front view and here I can see the extrusion. Just as the edges of the boxes were locked to the reference planes in the reference level view, I also want to do the same thing here in the front view. I'm going to use my align tool and I'll align the reference plane and the top of the box here and I'll lock it. On the bottom of the box it looks like it's on the reference level but there's no relationship there so I'm going to select it and I'll grab the grip and bring it up. Then I'll bring it back down to the reference level and lock it. Now all of the geometry is locked to reference planes which is the key to creating a parametric family. I'll switch back to my 3D view and I'll change it to shaded and now we can see the three-dimensional box that we've created. I'm going to go ahead and save this to the location of my class files and name it box. In the next step we're going to add some parameters and formulas to the box. I'm going to switch back to the reference level. Then I am going to create a set of equal dimensions. I'll use my align dimension tool and I'll pick from left to right across the reference planes then I will click to place them. They're currently set to two foot each. I'm going to select the equal button to keep these equal. Next I'll add an align dimension on the outer two planes. The equal dimensions will ensure that no matter what size the outer box is, the box will stay centered around the original planes. I'll do the same thing on the horizontal planes here. I'll make those equal. Then I will make the four foot dimension as well. Next I'm going to create some parameters. I'm going to select the four foot width dimension then in the ribbon I'm going to select create new parameter. It's going to be a family parameter. I'm going to name it width. I'm going to accept all other defaults including that this is a type parameter. Then I will click OK. Making this a type parameter means that the size can only be changed by having a different type. I'll do the same thing for the depth. I'll select the four foot dimension, make a new parameter, name it depth and once again keep it as a type. Then click OK. Next I'm going to add a parameter for the height. I'll activate my front view. 
add an aligned dimension between the reference planes. It's important to note that you must dimension between the reference planes. Do not select the geometry. The family will not work correctly. So I'll dimension between the reference planes, select the dimension, create a new parameter, this time calling it height. And we're also going to make this one an instance. That means that if I place multiple copies of the box in one project, they can each have a different height without having to duplicate and create new types. I'll go ahead and click OK. Next I will switch back to the 3D view. And in the ribbon I'm going to select Family Types. That will bring up the Family Types dialog box, which will allow me to flex some of these values here. So for example, let's say I made this box 6 foot by 6 foot. I can apply and I can see the adjustment there. Once again I can go back to 4 foot by 4 foot and apply and as you can see it sizes in and out from the center of the box. I can also create formulas to relate parameters to each other. For example, on this particular one we want the depth to always be half the size of the width. So in the formula section I'm going to type in width divided by 2. It's important that you type in the parameter names exactly as they're shown. I'll go ahead and apply and we can now see that it's going to be half the size of the width. If I adjust the width value, then we will see that the depth updates as well. Next I'm going to apply some materials to this extrusion. I'll select the extrusion, then in the properties, next to material, I will browse for some new material. I'll just simply select glass, then click OK. As long as I'm in shaded or realistic mode, I should now see that I have a glass box. Now this workflow is fine if my intentions is for this to always be glass, then I want to go ahead and set its material. But instead, I might want to be able to change its material at a later point. In that case, it makes more sense to set it up as a parameter. I'm going to select the extrusion again, and this time I'm going to select the Associate Family Parameter button to the right of the material. Then I'm going to create a new parameter. I'll call this one a box material. And I'm going to set this one to an instance so that once again if I place multiple copies of the box, they can each have different materials. I'll go ahead and click OK. Then OK again. I can see now that the material is grayed out. I cannot change it. Instead, I will change it by getting into the parameters. I'll select my family types. Then I can see my glass material. I'll go ahead and expand this to find a new material. And actually, in this case, I'm going to create a new material. It's going to be for some three inch square terracotta tiles. At the bottom of my material browser, I'll select create new material. That's going to give me a default new material. I'll right click on this and rename it. And I will simply call it Terra Cotta Tile. Then I will select the Appearance tab. I want to bring in some additional assets, so I'm going to select this button here to replace this asset. That will bring up my asset browser. Here I'm going to look for the 3 inch square terracotta. Looks like mine's right on top. If you don't see it right away, you can just simply type in terra and we'll search for those particular items that match. Here for the 3 inch square terracotta, I'm going to select replace the current asset and then I'll close that. Now we can see that the image material is here for when I'm in realistic mode. If I switch back to the graphics tab, in the shaded mode, it's still going to appear gray, so I'm going to select Use Render Appearance. Furthermore, when I'm in the shaded mode, I want to actually have it show some lines to indicate the tiling. So here in the foreground section, for the surface pattern, I'm going to click where it says None. I have two different types, Drafting and Model. I want to make sure I select Model here. Then I'm going to select down at the bottom to create a new pattern. First I can give it a name, I'll call it 3 inch tile. Then I'm going to select the crosshatch option. I'll adjust the angle to zero and then the spacing in each direction to 3 inches. 
and then I'll click OK. OK again. OK to the Material Browser. And then OK to my Family Types. Now you can see in the Shaded Mode, it gives us the shaded color with the lines to indicate tiling. And if I switch it to Realistic, I will see the new material applied. Next, I'm going to create multiple family types. So once more, I'm going to come up to my ribbon and choose family types. I currently have a four foot by two foot box. So up top here, I'm going to select new type and I'm going to name it accordingly. And then I will click OK. Then I will create a new type. This one is going to be six foot by three foot. So I'll do a new type again here. Enter in the appropriate name. Then I will adjust the width to be six feet. And of course, because of the formula, the depth will update to three feet. I'll create another type for an eight foot by four foot. Then click OK, and then adjust the width to 8 foot. Once more, the depth updates. I'll do one more here. This one is going to be an 11 foot by 5 foot 6 inch. I'll adjust the width to 11 feet, and the depth updates. I'll go ahead and click Apply, and we'll actually see the box change. I can use the drop down and switch to one of the other sizes and apply, and we'll see the box update in each case. I'll go ahead and click OK, and next I want to set a category for the family. The category often comes from the template that you use to create the family. For example, if I created a lighting fixture or furniture, they will automatically take on those categories. I started with a generic on this one, but I can go ahead and assign a category to it. I'll come up top to my properties panel here, and select Family Categories and Parameters. Then I can choose a category to place this in. In this case, I'll select Furniture. Then I'll click OK. One of the ways this impacts my projects is when I do something like hide all furniture in a view. It now recognizes this box as furniture and it will hide along with any other furniture. Next, I wanna test this box out. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to open up this other project here box test project and I'm going to place a copy of the box in here. So from the box I'll go ahead and load it into the project and then I'll go ahead and place four copies of this family anywhere on this little floor that I've got here. I'm going to switch to the 3D view and we can see the four boxes. Now we have four family types so if I select one of the boxes I can use the drop down to select a different size. So I can continue to do that until I have all three family types displayed on screen. Now you may remember that when we set up the parameters, the width and the depth were type parameters. So that means if I want to change the width and the depth, I have to edit type and adjust it in here. But really what I should do is duplicate it and make a new type if I want to adjust those values. However, the height we set as an instance parameter. So I can select any of these boxes and adjust its height differently than the rest. So as you can see, I can select each one of these and give them some different values. Similarly, the materials were applied as instance parameters as well. So I can select each box and select a different material for that particular box. That concludes this look at the creation of a basic parametric family in Autodesk Revit.